In Buddhism, Buddhahood Sanskrit, Buddhatva, Pali, Buddhatta or Buddhabhava, Chinese, Fuguo is the condition or rank of a Buddha, awakened one. The goal of Mahayana's Bodhisattva path is Samyaksam Buddhahood, so that one may benefit all sentient beings by teaching them the path of cessation of dukkha. Mahayana theory contrasts this with the goal of the Theravada path, where the goal is individual arhatship. Topic. Explanation of the term Buddha In Theravada Buddhism, Buddha refers to one who has become awake through their own efforts and insight, without a teacher to point out the Dharma Sanskrit, Pali Dhamma, right way of living. A Samyaksam Buddha rediscovered the truths and the path to awakening and teaches these to others after his awakening. A Pratyeka Buddha also reaches Nirvana through his own efforts, but does not teach the Dharma to others. An arhat needs to follow the teaching of a Buddha to attain nirvana, but can also preach the Dharma after attaining nirvana. In one instance the term Buddha is also used in Theravada to refer to all who attain nirvana, using the term Savakabuddha to designate an arhat, someone who depends on the teachings of a Buddha to attain nirvana. In this broader sense it is equivalent to the arhat. Buddhahood is the state of an awakened being, who having found the path of cessation of dukkha, suffering, as created by attachment to desires and distorted perception and thinking, is in the state of no more learning. There is a broad spectrum of opinion on the universality and method of attainment of Buddhahood, depending on Gautama Buddha's teachings that a school of Buddhism emphasizes. The level to which this manifestation requires ascetic practices varies from none at all to an absolute requirement, dependent on doctrine. Mahayana Buddhism emphasizes the bodhisattva ideal instead of the arhat. The Tathagatagarbha and Buddha nature doctrines of Mahayana Buddhism consider Buddhahood to be a universal and innate property of absolute wisdom. This wisdom is revealed in a person's current lifetime through Buddhist practice, without any specific relinquishment of pleasures or earthly desires. Buddhists do not consider Gautama to have been the only Buddha. The Pali Canon refers to many previous ones see list of the named Buddhas, while the Mahayana tradition additionally has many Buddhas of celestial origin see Amitabha or Vairocana as examples, for lists of many thousands of Buddha names see Taisho Tripitaka numbers 439 to 448. Topic. Nature of the Buddha The various Buddhist schools hold some varying interpretations on the nature of Buddha see below. Topic. Attainments All Buddhist traditions hold that a Buddha is fully awakened and has completely purified his mind of the three poisons of craving, aversion and ignorance. A Buddha is no longer bound by samsara, and has ended the suffering which unawakened people experience in life. Most schools of Buddhism have also held that the Buddha was omniscient. However, the early texts contain explicit repudiations of making this claim of the Buddha. Topic: <laughs> 10 characteristics of a Buddha. Some Buddhists meditate on or contemplate the Buddha as having 10 characteristics, ch jp she, these characteristics are frequently mentioned in the Pali Canon as well as Mahayana teachings, and are chanted daily in many Buddhist monasteries. Thus gone, thus come SKT, Tathagata Worthy One SKT, Arhat Perfectly Self-Enlightened SKT, Samyak Sambuddha Perfected in Knowledge and Conduct SKT, Vidya Karana Sampana Well Gone SKT, Shugata Knower of the World SKT, Lokavita Unsurpassed SKT, Anuttara Leader of Persons to be Tamed SKT, Purusa Damya Sarathi Teacher of the Gods and Humans SKT, Sasta Deva Manasyanam The Blessed One or Fortunate One SKT, Bhagavat The Tenth Epithet is sometimes listed as The World Honored Enlightened One SKT, Buddha Lokanatha or The Blessed Enlightened One SKT, Buddha Bhagavan Topic Buddha as a supreme human in the Pali Canon, Gautama Buddha is known as being a teacher of the gods and humans, superior to both the gods and humans in the sense of having nirvana or the greatest bliss, whereas the devas, or gods, are still subject to anger, fear and sorrow. In the Madhupindika Sutta MN18, Buddha is described in powerful terms as the lord of the Dhamma Pali, Dhammasami, SKT, Dharma Swami and the bestower of immortality Pali, Amitasadatta. 
Similarly, in the Anuradha Sutta SN Buddha is described as the Tathagata, the supreme man, the superlative man, attainer of the superlative attainment. Buddha is asked about what happens to the Tathagata after death of the physical body. Buddha replies, and so, Anuradha, when you can't pin down the Tathagata as a truth or reality even in the present life, is it proper for you to declare, friends, the Tathagata, the supreme man, the superlative man, attainer of the superlative attainment, being described, is described otherwise than with these four positions, the Tathagata exists after death, does not exist after death, both does and does not exist after death, neither exists nor does not exist after death? In the Vakali Sutta SN Buddha identifies himself with the Dhamma, O Vakali, whoever sees the Dhamma, sees me the Buddha another reference from the Agana Sutta of the Dhyanikaya, says to his disciple Vasita, O Vasita. The word of Dhammakaya is indeed the name of the Tathagata Shravasti Dhammika, a Theravada monk, writes, in the centuries after his final Nibbana it sometimes got to the stage that the legends and myths obscured the very real human being behind them and the Buddha came to be looked upon as a god. Actually, the Buddha was a human being, not a mere human being as is sometimes said but a special class of human called a complete person Mahaparissa. Such complete persons are born no different from others and indeed they physically remain quite ordinary. Sangharakshita also states that the first thing we have to understand, and this is very important, is that the Buddha is a human being. But a special kind of human being, in fact the highest kind, so far as we know. Topic. Buddha as a human When asked whether he was a deva or a human, he replied that he had eliminated the deep-rooted unconscious traits that would make him either one, and should instead be called a Buddha, one who had grown up in the world but had now gone beyond it, as a lotus grows from the water but blossoms above it, unsoiled. Andrew Skilton writes that the Buddha was never historically regarded by Buddhist traditions as being merely human. It is important to stress that, despite modern Theravada teachings to the contrary often a sop to skeptical Western pupils, he was never seen as being merely human. For instance, he is often described as having the 32 major and 80 minor marks or signs of a Mahapurusa superman. The Buddha himself denied that he was either a man or a god, and in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta he states that he could live for an eon where he asked to do so. However, Thich Nhat Hanh, a Vietnamese Buddhist monk in the Zen tradition, states that Buddha was not a god. He was a human being like you and me, and he suffered just as we do." Jack Maguire writes that Buddha is inspirational based on his humanness. A fundamental part of Buddhism's appeal to billions of people over the past two and a half millennia is the fact that the central figure, commonly referred to by the title, Buddha, was not a god, or a special kind of spiritual being, or even a prophet or an emissary of one. On the contrary, he was a human being like the rest of us who quite simply woke up to full aliveness. Basing his teachings on the Lotus Sutra, the Chinese monk Qi Hai the founder of the Tendai sect developed an explanation of life, 3,000 realms in a single moment, which posits a Buddha nature that can be awakened in any life, and that it is possible for a person to become enlightened to the law. In this view, the state of Buddhahood and the states of ordinary people are exist with and within each other. Nichiren, the founder of Nichiren Buddhism, states that the real meaning of the Lord Shakyamuni Buddha's appearance in this world lay in his behavior as a human being. He also stated that, Shakyamuni Buddha, the Lotus Sutra, and we ordinary human beings are in no way different or separate from each other. <laughs> Mahasamhika Supramundane Buddha In the early Buddhist schools, the Mahasamhika branch regarded the Buddhas as being characterized primarily by their supramundane nature. The Mahasamphikas advocated the transcendental and supramundane nature of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and the fallibility of Arhats. Of the 48 special theses attributed by the Samyavadoparasnakakra to the Mahasamhika Ekaviyavaharika, Lokottaravada, and the Kukatika, 20 points concern the supramundane nature of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. According to the Samyavadoparasnakakra, these four groups held that the Buddha is able to know all dharmas in a single moment of the mind. Yao Zhihua writes, in their view, the Buddha is equipped with the following supernatural qualities, transcendence lokotera, lack of defilements, all of his utterances preaching his teaching, expounding all his teachings in a single utterance, all of his sayings being true, his physical body being limitless, his power prabhava being limitless, the length of his life being limitless, never tiring of enlightening sentient beings and awakening pure faith in them, having no sleep or dreams, no pause in answering a question, and always in meditation samadhi. A doctrine ascribed to the Mahasamphikas is, 
the power of the Tathagatas is unlimited, and the life of the Buddhas is unlimited. According to Guang Xing, two main aspects of the Buddha can be seen in Mahasamhika teachings, the true Buddha who is omniscient and omnipotent, and the manifested forms through which he liberates sentient beings through skillful means. For the Mahasamphikas, the historical Gautama Buddha was one of these transformation bodies SKT, Nirmanakaya, while the essential real Buddha is equated with the Dharmakaya, as in Mahayana traditions, the Mahasamphikas held the doctrine of the existence of many contemporaneous Buddhas throughout the Ten Directions. In the Mahasamhika Lokanavatana Sutra, it is stated, "...the Buddha knows all the dharmas of the countless Buddhas of the Ten Directions." It is also stated, "...all Buddhas have one body, the body of the Dharma." The concept of many bodhisattvas simultaneously working toward Buddhahood is also found among the Mahasamhika tradition, and further evidence of this is given in the Samyavadoparasanakakra, which describes the doctrines of the Mahasamphikas. Depictions of the Buddha in art Buddhas are frequently represented in the form of statues and paintings. Commonly seen designs include the seated Buddha the reclining Buddha the standing Buddha Hote or Budai, the obese laughing Buddha, usually seen in China this figure is believed to be a representation of a medieval Chinese monk who is associated with Maitreya, the future Buddha, and is therefore technically not a Buddha image. The emaciated Buddha, which shows Siddhartha Gautama during his extreme ascetic practice of starvation, the Buddha statue shown calling for rain is a pose common in Lao. Topic. Markings Most depictions of Buddha contain a certain number of markings, which are considered the signs of his enlightenment. These signs vary regionally, but two are common. A protuberance on the top of the head denoting superb mental acuity. Long earlobes denoting superb perception in the Pali Canon, there is frequent mention of a list of 32 physical characteristics of the Buddha. Topic. Hand gestures The poses and hand gestures of these statues, known respectively as asana and mudras, are significant to their overall meaning. The popularity of any particular mudra or asana tends to be region-specific, such as the vajra or mudra, which is popular in Japan and Korea but rarely seen in India. Others are more common, for example, the Virada wish granting mudra is common among standing statues of the Buddha, particularly when coupled with the Abhaya fearlessness and protection mudra. Topic. See also. Equals equals notes. <laughs>